Hey everybody, it's me, Delilah Cordova. I am back again for another awesome author interview. And today I have with me Simon Rose. And Simon Rose is the author of a hundred books. Wow. So um, today in particular, we're probably talking about shadow zone into the web black dawn and hopefully we'll be able to drag out as much good information out of simon rose to help other authors in their journey um because he is also a help you know a, a supporter for other authors in editing and other areas of book publishing so simon rose go ahead and tell them about you and your awesome author life in books yeah, thanks a lot. It's, it's great to be here. Uh, you mentioned the most recent books I've just had come out. This is, I'll just hold them up for the camera. This is Shadow Zone, the first part of a, uh, a trilogy, a three part uh, series. Uh, there's another two parts, of course. There's uh, these two here. Uh, this is part two and part three of this particular trilogy. It's all about a dark parallel universe where the inhabitants are ruled by a uh, vicious killer dictatorship and they're all out to destroy us and take over our world and things. It's an excellent term. Uh, Excellent series of books. I just released a um, box set of these books uh, a few days ago, actually, and that's on uh, on Amazon and everything now as well. Uh, and also, this earlier this year, I also produced um, the final part of another trilogy, a paranormal trilogy, which is called, uh, well, the Flashback Trilogy. This is all about somebody who travels back in time into somebody else's life with the help of a, a ghost and psychic mediums and things like that. That's uh, That's part one. And this is, uh, let's see now, part two is this one, Twisted Fate. And the uh, third one is uh, Parallel Destiny, which, as I say, came out um, in the spring, in April, May, I think. So uh, in addition to those, I've also got um, uh, another eight novels, which I won't go through showing all of them. But they're on uh, sort of science fiction, fantasy, uh, time travel comic books, uh, alternate universes, uh, a, a history, all sorts of things in there too. And as you'd mentioned when we came on there, uh, I've, I've been working an awful lot with, uh, with other authors in the last uh, two or three years now, probably edited about eight, nine books this year for other people, and I do coaching for other writers as well. So all keeps me, uh, all keeps me very busy. Awesomeness. <laughs> so, Simon, um, as far as your writing, well, I, I wanted to start with because I was looking at your covers as you were talking, and you have some really great detailed covers there. What is the best process in getting your book covers done? Well, in my case, the, the first eight novels uh, were uh, produced by a publishing. Uh, I'm in Canada, and the publisher was in um, uh, Vancouver, and he, uh, the uh, publisher took care of all the covers for those. I did have some input into them, of course, approval and things. And the same thing with the paranormal ones, where also a publisher. Uh, and with the uh, with the most recent one, the Shadow Zone series, I, I uh, went uh, on a website and uh, used some templates for that, which I thought fit. Uh, fit the covers and everything. The main thing is you've got to get the attention, of course, with the covers. We all know that, I think, as as authors. Uh, mm -hmm. The cover is naturally, it's the first thing that people see. And if, 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 I suppose, the same for you, if you're turned off by a book cover when you see it on Amazon, you're not going to go any further uh, at all. And so you've lost the sale. So it's very important, I think, to get the covers and make them uh, uh, be dramatic and drag people in. It was particularly important with the, with the, uh, Shadow Zone one because that's the first one. So I do a lot of promotion of that one because it's the first one in the series, and it's uh, and that, so that's the cover that uh, people see first. Right, right. Um, and as far as what is your views on your book cover win in bookstores? Uh, into bookstores. Go ahead. In what sense do you mean? I'm talking about like um, shelf appeal. What are some important aspects for shelf appeal for books? In your well, opinion. Well, if you can get obviously if you can get your books face uh, with the with the front cover facing out in the bookstore, that's much better. And uh, if you're dealing with your local bookstores, as I do quite often for uh, book signings and things like that, I, I go to books the, the, the bookstores here in in where I live uh, at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. And if you've got a good relationship with a particular bookstore, or the manager, uh, they are more likely to put your books on sort of end caps on displays and things like that, which are in local interest, local author sections and things like that. And that makes a big difference because obviously if they're just, if it's just the spine, then it's difficult to find. Um, 
I, I a lot of people uh, do go looking for my books sometimes if they met me at an event and they need to be visible. Right, right. And I was I was actually talking about this on um, the Smart Author series um, last week or the week before because the hurricane was last week, week before. And um, we were talking about how important it is to make sure that you know your spine. Um, if you're going to put your book in the bookstores, that your spine is at least appeasing um, and can stand out against all the other spines that it's in, because you know it could be, it could be one small minor detail that changes the the sales for your book versus those next to it that are you know only spine out on the shelf. So. <laughs> yeah, and the, and, the, and the positioning is important too. I mean, I, I, when, I, when my first book came out, just based on my last name, uh, Rose R O S E, I uh, when my first book came out, I, I realized I was next door on the shelf to somebody called Rowling, uh, who I think you may have heard of. Uh, uh, she was she wrote these Harry Potter books that, that, that were popular once, and also right. Rick Riordan as also appears on the same shelves as me sometimes and and even uh, lord of the rings isn't that far away uh, for yeah. while i am on the shelf so that does help sometimes yeah yeah that's that's actually really smart to think about because you're standing up against big competition on that shelf if it's in alphabetical order so yeah that's that's super smart <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even think of that like really <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, it's the name I was born with. I just I, I'm just lucky that uh, J.K. Rowling came along, perhaps, and, and and produced all those books next to mine. Right. You know, that, you know it could be a benefit. It could be it, it could have it could weigh both ways because when you got a ton, um, the person next to you gets more exposure because they're you know a little bit more famous. But yours is right next to them, so you can make yours equally you know attractive and yeah. you know, hopefully get more people that way. Yeah. And it's also what I mean, science fiction and fantasy for young adults, teenagers or whatever, it's a very large category. It's as large as, you know, say thrillers or murder mysteries or romances. I mean, it's a big, it's a big category. So it's, 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 it's I don't think there's a magic wand or a, a silver bullet or whatever you want to call it for standing out either online or in person, but we just have to try everything and see what works. Right. Right. So as, um, so I have two questions, but my first question is, um, as somebody who writes fiction, what is some of the best advice that you could give to market your books as a fiction, fiction author? Well, you've got to get well. To, to, you've got to, to, as I said, you've got to look at every single way of marketing that you can. I mean, I, I, my advice to people when they first start out, perhaps, is to uh, get a piece of paper and make a list. Of just about every single way you can think of to promote your your books, whether it's um, even the most ridiculous things that you could never afford, like buying a billboard at the side of the road, or buying TV advertising, or dragging a banner after a plane above a, a big sporting event. I mean, you, you probably can't afford any of these things, but you try them all and see what works. And I've, I've tried some that haven't worked, and I've done book signings and things over the years, and local community events, and I've done online advertising. A lot, uh, especially since I self-published the um, the Shadow Zone books and my uh, uh, guides for writers. That are, there's, there's what eight of those now, I think. Um, mm -hmm. So I do a lot of promotion with Amazon advertising and things like that. And I've tried lots of different. As you know, in the author world, we get lots of emails from companies uh, that will promote your book and put it in their newsletter and send out. Uh, stuff on their site and Twitter feeds and goodness knows what else. And you've got to try them sometimes. Some of them are, are, are probably scams and don't work. And some of them are quite quite reasonable and you get a bit out of it. But um, you've got to try everything. So I don't think there's any um, for promotion. I would say try everything. You can't um, – books don't sell themselves. That's what you've got to remember. Uh, right. You can't stick a book on Amazon and hope it will sell. Uh, you've got to also promote it on any way you can. Right, right. It's so true. Um, now, so you are both um, indie published, and you are also gone a traditional publishing route. Yes. And I wanted to know the the what you found to be good, and what you you know the pros and cons of doing um, either route, in your opinion, since you've experienced both. 
Well, I think the first thing to start with is probably the traditional publishing uh, methods, which, are, which of course, were are tried and true, and we've done them for a long time, all of us. Uh, that's changed in the last – it's changed quite a lot in the last sort of four or five years, I suppose. But mm. certainly, I think with them, the advantage of using publishers, of course, is they have the distribution network. Uh, right. You're not paying for the editing, uh, and you've got uh, – yeah, you, you, if you're lucky, you'll get some great covers. Uh, and if you do, if you do say picture books or something, you might get fantastic artwork, uh, and you're not paying for any of that, uh, unless of course uh, you get um, sucked into using some sort of vanity publisher or something like that. But I mean, normally uh, most reputable publishers, you've got all that uh, support, of course. But you've also got to remember that you don't have control over the promotion with that. At least with with self-published books, you have control over all that, which is good and bad. I mean, you can promote as much as you like. Um, but of course, you've got to get the books. Uh, you've got to do all that yourself. Um, and most people, I think, uh, when I've been editing for people, one of the things I'll always ask them is, "Well, what are you uh, planning to do with this?" It's usually for something that they've got great ideas for, whether, uh, like picture books, and they're going to do games and, and tie-ins and all sorts of marketing stuff. And they don't really have an idea of how much work that's going to be. Right. And I think then there are some authors who want to sit at home and write books and make money and, and they're introverts and, and it's like well at first at least you're going to have to get out there and, and right. uh, do public readings which I I, know, I don't really like doing public readings but I'm happy to teach and all the rest of it but reading from your own work can be a bit daunting uh, but uh, yeah you've got to uh, if you're self-published you've got to do a lot of that work yourself but the advantage of it is you are in control so it, it's it's pros and cons on both sides I think. Right. Traditional publishing is becoming, um, it's changed a lot. And um, a lot of publishers go out of business every year uh, and uh, more and more people are doing it themselves. So what the future holds, it's probably uh, a bit of each. Uh, there are people who've been traditionally published for many years who mm -hmm. are now also self-publishing books in between when they come when they come out with the publishers or they're republishing stuff that's gone out of print themselves and everything. So right. it's a hundred now for everybody, I think. Yeah. Right, right. That's you said a wealth of information. That's all like picking your mind. <laughs> oh, you do that. That's what I'm for. Yeah. A yeah. hundred a hundred books, you know. Um so as you um have gone along the you know your path here, what is something that has made you a better writer? Or what's you know one thing that you you can contribute to you being so successful as an author? Oh, what one thing? Uh, yeah. I don't I don't really know really. I think I think I I, I think we all learn as we go along. I, I would imagine that the um, the the first books I did are not, are not as well written perhaps as the later ones. I don't know. That's just me looking at them. I think um, uh, I'm not sure what is the, are you asking me if there's a secret? I don't know. <laughs> You know, some authors think they know exactly what what happened or what clicked for them that made it happen, and some other uh, authors are just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I think I think you get better. The only way to improve as a writer is to keep is is to write. I mean, you keep writing, you do get better. It's uh, and it's hard to say when that actually occurs. When 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 you when it whether it happens after your first book or your seventeenth book or whatever. I think you do get you do improve. Uh, your writing improves. It just in just to experience, I think. Um, I, I have no shortage of ideas. I mean, when people talk about writer's block, it's probably because they have no idea. I have no shortage of ideas. I sometimes struggle to find the time to do the books that I want to do because I'm working for other people so often. I do, say, the editing and the coaching, and I do nonfiction books for educational publishers for, for teenagers and young adults all the time. So as well as corporate stuff and, and websites and everything, so I, it's difficult to find the time sometimes to do the books. Um, no, you've just got to you've just got to keep going. You just got to keep going. And and one thing I suppose I've mentioned in classes a few times, I meet lots of people who are they're working on their book. You know, it's what are you doing? Oh, I'm working on my book this weekend. They're never going to get it done if they're just working on it. They need to set a deadline and say, okay, I am going to finish this book by the end of December. And if they finish it in mid December, great. If they finish it on February first, that's great too. But without a deadline. They're just going to be tinkering every now and again in between shopping or looking after the kids or they're too tired when they come home from work or something, you know. So uh, the only thing to, I suppose, is to keep writing. 
Uh, and you mentioned um, the marketing earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that none of us can do as writers is we cannot force people to buy our books. Uh, no matter how much promotion we do, we can't say to somebody, you must buy this book. You've got to try everything. And, and even the worst written book in the world could be the most popular book in the world. So you just never know, you know. Right. Right. Put, yeah. You know, my favorite um, my favorite book to refer back to in, in that case is The Great Gatsby, where it came out, didn't get no visibility, uh, nobody knew what it was, but then it was picked up and given to soldiers. And then that's when it finally exploded in the 1920s, which was years after it was created. So <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them like that. I mean, if I think I've mentioned it in one of the writer's guides because it's common knowledge on the internet. There's books uh, like, like uh, Stephen King had trouble getting published and, and J.K. Rowling, as we know, and John Grisham and all these people, uh, especially with, with J.K. Rowling. Somebody said, well, well, kids don't want to read about wizards and, and, and magic creatures. And these are old hats. They don't want that. They want realistic, you know, realistic writing about kids who are having problems in their lives. And it turned out to be uh, nonsense because obviously the um, and it spawned all these different things, you know. Right. So you, just, uh, you never know. So um, one thing I wanted to ask you um, as someone who's written a ton of books is um, do you think that because, you know, there's a lot of authors out there, they'll write one or two books and then, you know, stop there. But then, you know, there's a lot of advice being given in the author world saying, oh, you need to write series of books. You need to, you know what I'm saying? Um, in order for the author to be successful at selling books. Do you particularly think that is true? Well, I think the, I think this, the, the law of average in some ways, it's a, a numbers game. If you've written one book, uh, there's more chance of you getting noticed online if you've written 10 books, you know, I suppose, that, than, than there is one. Uh, yeah. I think some people do that. They do tend to um, go on to the um, uh, start start off on this journey and, and and say, well, yeah, I've written my book. Uh, you know, it took took them twenty years to write, and now it's and it's a massive book. Probably it's probably you know three hundred thousand words or something, a massive thick book. And then they're just going. They think that's it. Now I'm going to make lots of millions from this book. But uh, the example probably or one of the examples is uh, people who write in the romance genre. Uh, cranking out books every three or four months and, and you know some of them have written 40 books it probably in in six or seven years uh, whether they're any good or not i don't know because i haven't read them i can't uh, say but uh, they obviously have much more visibility uh, uh, online uh, in terms of series the the principle is i suppose that if you uh if you've written a series of, uh, of six books then you can do box sets and all the rest of it and you can do all sorts of promotion you know give away the third one for free in the hope that people will then pick up the first one and it, it, there's lots of tricks to it uh, but i think the more books you have online the more the more visibility you're going to get for sure i mean i've got a there are 100 books i think or so with my name on on amazon and that gives me visibility um but again as i said earlier i can't force people to buy them and, and send me money right right yeah. so um and <laughs> I wanted to talk more about your, your author life and how it is. Um, but there was one other thing. Hold on. <laughs> I want you were talking about um, time management and how people need to um, schedule into their time um, for you know, writing and stuff like that. Um, would you say that they, you know, I don't know if you know, uh, like project management, maybe they need to do something along the lines of a book project management tool or you know create a schedule along with the book management book project management tools you know what i'm saying <laughs> well, are you talking about scheduling in if are you talking about just uh, the book project or just scheduling yeah. the writing within their own lives no i'm talking about um scheduling out your whole book project and right. making, um you know tasks creating tasks and, and scope and all that stuff um so that you can you know develop your book management team <laughs> you book, you well, I, yeah, I mean, I, 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 because I work from home and I, I, and I, I switch from fiddling around with a book to doing somebody's website to, to doing some marketing of my own and then going out and teaching. As I, it's hard to say from my own schedule, but, uh, but normally, if if I was to sit down and um, say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to now work on this idea 
that I've had for a few years, and there's, there's, there's some that are very well developed. I would sit down and with, with pen and paper myself, and, and, and away from the computer, probably a coffee shop or somewhere, and start working on an outline. I always do an outline. I did not do an outline for the first book, but I have it for all the others since then. Um, and the outline can be sometimes 5,000 words or so. And then once I've finished the outline, or no, before I finish the outline, I will start writing the book. There's usually something in the plot uh, about a third of the way through that doesn't quite work. But I know that once I w I'm working on the thing, it, it'll come, it, it, I'll work it out. So I do all that. Um, I, I always do the um, uh, outline first. And if I had nothing else to do, I would, yes, I, I would be able to write a book probably in three or four months, you know, if I had nothing else to do. Uh, so I would definitely do a plan first and then I would uh, work on it as I go along. But I, I wouldn't have to work on it in order. I, if I want to write chapter one, two and three and then write chapter eight because it's interesting and chapter four isn't, uh, it's more a necessary chapter, then yeah, I can do all that. I don't have to do it in order because I've, I've got the framework. Um, right. But the main thing I found, as I mentioned earlier, is it seems to be that the deadlines do work. I, I do work with a number of clients who are, as I say, they're working on their book. Oh, I'm hoping to work on my book this weekend. And, you know, and they've got another job and everything. And they still haven't got it done. Uh, right. But if you set a deadline, and even if you miss the deadline, I mean, it's no good saying on January 1st, I'm going to work on my book this year. You, you need to say, okay, I want to get to a certain stage by Easter or the summer or whatever. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, because it's easy to procrastinate and not make a deadline. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know as well as I know, as, as I am, um, I'm an entrepreneur and, you know, I work from home <laughs> now. I used to have an office, but now I work from home. And, you know, it's so easy to say, oh, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z and then not do it, you know, but you need to be really strict on yourself and make sure that you're uh, adhering to these schedules. Otherwise, you're not going to progress forward. You're just going to stay stagnant where you're at, you know? Yeah, you can still do other things. Of course you can. But I mean, the thing is, the main thing with a book is uh, it's, got, it's got to get finished. I mean, it, I mean, uh, uh, there's lots of people who, are, who have half a book finished or they've started a few chapters or they've got an idea and they haven't started it yet. Well, uh, you know, maybe you're one of them. I mean, I've got, I've got some where the idea is simply a, uh, a title and, a, and a maybe three or four lines. And I've got other ones that are projects that are, you know, there's 20,000 words in a document somewhere full of notes and uh, links to things online and 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 goodness knows what else uh, that I you know that, that I've worked on for a long time. Some of them are more well developed, but um, it's a case of setting a time aside. I mean, the moment it's a struggle because I'm doing things for other people. It's a bit of a struggle to get it done. Uh, but um, uh, one the one I'm working on at the moment, I'm kind of determined to get it done by the end of the year. Um, it won't be fit to publish at the end of the year, but it'll be done. I'll be able to then go back and tinker with it and things. In the early part of next year, it'll kind of be, if it doesn't come out till um, next fall or something, that's no problem because I mean uh, people don't expect a book every month, you know, or they should probably. But once a year, a book once a year is probably fine, you know. Um, right, right. So, what is coming? Like, I like that you brought that up because that brings me to a good question. What is to come with Simon Rose? What are we going to be seeing within the next three to five years? Are Beyond. Well, yeah, well, I've got, I have a lots, lots of um, uh, plans. I, I say I've got one a moment. I've got a historical uh, novel at the moment, uh, uh, which is set in the uh, 1600s, which is the one I've, uh, I've finished the, I've almost finished the first part of it, but then there's another, going to be another two sections, and I'm not sure where the third section's going. But I mean, I, I am working on that. Then there's another one that's a, a sort of um, magical. Uh, World War Two era epic, which I'm also going to start on, and then there's a then there's um oh there's probably three or four other ideas that I will probably get get out uh, out there in the next um three or four years. I probably won't do any more guides for writers to teach other people how to write because I've done eight of those and I don't think I uh, anything else I'd probably be repeating things that other people have written. You know, there's read stuff that's readily available online from other places. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think, and I'm, I, I will probably again add all these uh, non-fiction books for the educational publishers. There'll be a lot of those probably. So, yeah. So I'm uh, onward and upward, really. I, as I said earlier, it, the more books you have online, 
uh, the more traffic and visibility you're going to get. So I intend to keep going. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about your your author life here, um, about your family, about about you know more about you. Oh, this is all very personal stuff, isn't it? Really. Well, I, I'm I'm here. I'm in uh, Calgary, Alberta, which is in Western Canada. I'm about uh, an hour from the from the majestic Rocky Mountains here. I'm originally from the UK. Uh, I live here. My son lives here with me, and my dog and cat live here with me. Uh, and they are the dog and cat are no help at all with the boy. no help at all, um, except getting in the way. Uh, and locally here as an author, I suppose I do a lot of stuff right here, uh, just like you do. I work from home. I do a lot of all the work I seem to do these days seems to be online. I do teach at uh, uh, two local universities and one of the colleges as well, uh, 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 writing uh, wow. writing codes, writing courses on writing for kids, writing science fiction, writing historical fiction, writing memoirs. I've done all these classes lately. Um, and um, yeah, so and I, I um, present and uh, do workshops and things at local writers conferences and things like that as well. So I nice. keep busy. I keep busy. Nice. I think that's awesome. Um, and so, you, do you have any online courses? I do have a number of online courses. Yes, I've got a course. These are on the website. Um, I've got. Um, there's one course that's called um, Writing for Children and Young Adults. It's basically an online course. It's not a video course or anything. It's just a, it's just a course that uh, I send people assignments and they send them back and, and I grade them and all that sort of stuff. That's one. One on writing uh, uh, for children and young adults. One on writing historical fiction, uh, which is also on there. And also I think there's six, maybe seven uh, online workshops for children uh, or you know, kids between say 10 and 15 something like that which are on a variety of things one's about writing about superheroes one's about um, creating fantasy kingdoms there's one about uh, uh, writing time travel stories there's one about uh, sort of imaginary scientific projects all sorts of things so yes I do uh, online courses as well as well as as we mentioned the editing and coaching of uh, and that's any genre I, I will um, edit books in any genre, and I've worked as a coach for people who write in any genre too. Nice, awesomeness. Well, Simon, um, it's been so great having you on today. Um, I wanted to, you know, wanted to let everybody know that um, we're you'll be able to connect with Simon at the link that I've been posting up below. Oh, I see that too. Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> Simon rosecom So, guys. What I need y'all to do is hashtag support the author. Um, run out there, go check out Simon's, connect with Simon. Um, you know, go and check out his work. Um, if you guys have any, you know, books on your bookshelf from Simon, make sure you go and hashtag review <laughs> on Amazon. If you um, are just now tuning in and you missed the, the beginning, uh, make sure you hashtag replay. Or if you started at the beginning and you're on the replay, I would still like to know if you, you were able to um, replay. If you have questions, please leave them below in the comments. And me, Arth, the author, will get right back to you on them. Um, so yeah, Simon, do you have anything else that you would like to like for them to know? Uh, yes, I would like people to know that I would like you to go out and buy all my books in millions of copies immediately. Yeah. <laughs> You're so crazy. <laughs> but no, thank, and also, thank you very much for the opportunity. This has been a wonderful thing, and I'm sure that uh, this is obviously the live portion, but I know that I will be busy promoting this uh, this as soon as I'm able to everywhere. It'll probably be a permanent feature on my uh, website and everywhere else. So I will certainly spread the word on this as well. I might even put it on my YouTube channel if I can. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, But thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been great. Oh, no problem. Anytime. All right. So with that being said, me and Simon are going to be out. <laughs> One moment. <laughs>